Marjorie, accompanied her betrothed King Joffrey, returns from the great sept of Baelor in a heavily guarded palanquin. Against official protocol, she stops the procession in Flea Bottom unexpectedly. To the shock of her guards and the bewilderment of Joffrey, Marjorie steps out of her carriage and began exploring the streets, despite the warnings of danger and lack of hygiene from her handmaiden. She eventually arrives at an orphanage and begins interacting with the children. Meanwhile, her servants distribute bread and toys, earning her the love of Flea Bottom's small folk. That evening, Marjorie and her brother Loris Tyrell dine Joffrey and his mother, Cersei Lannister. Cersei is unhappy with Marjorie's earlier actions and admonished her boldness, reminding her that her impromptu charity work took place on the same streets where the royal party was assaulted weeks earlier. During this argument, Joffrey defends Marjorie and criticizes his mother. As a result, Cersei realizes that Marjorie is adept at winning the hearts and minds of her people, a skill which Cersei lacks. Later, Marjorie and her grandmother, Lady Olena Tyrell, invite Sansa for a private meeting with them at the gardens of King's Landing. Loras escorts Sansa to the gardens for the meeting. During the meeting, Lady Olena dismisses Mace as a fool for supporting Renly Baratheon's claim to the throne. By contrast, Marjorie speaks well of her late husband. During the meeting, Olena insists that Sansa tell them the truth about what Joffrey was like since Marjorie is to marry him. While Sansa is initially reluctant to share her feelings, she admits that Joffrey is a monster, since he had reneged on his earlier promise to spare her father's life. While Olena is disappointed at these revelations, she is not surprised given the rumors that have been circulating about Joffrey's public outbursts. While Sansa is worried that this would mean that the Tyrrells would cancel their proposed marriage alliance, meaning Sansa will be stuck with Joffrey again, Olena assures her that her son Mace is too intent on Marjorie entering into a royal marriage to cancel it for anything. Later, Marjorie is summoned to Joffrey's chambers to see if she needs anything before he leaves on a hunting trip. While Joffrey has previously been easy for Marjorie to manipulate, Cersei was apparently able to plant one seed of doubt in his mind. The fact that Marjorie was married to his uncle Renly, and thus, already had sex with another man, whom Cersei described as a traitor and known degenerate. When questioned, Marjorie says that she was ordered to marry a traitor as her family duty, but Joffrey implies that this still means he must have had sex with her. Joffrey angrily questions Marjorie about the relationship and she delicately placates him by feigning demure shyness and painting herself as a dutiful, but frustrated, bride. She uses the rumors about Renly's homosexuality to redirect Joffrey's anger, stating that Renly always found excuses to avoid sex, but, in one instance, drunkenly suggested, something that sounded very painful and could not possibly result in children, which draws her new fiancé sympathy. Joffrey tells Marjorie he had considered making Renly's perversion punishable by death. Marjorie eventually manages to divert attention to the new custom crossbow Joffrey's had made for his excursion. It quickly becomes apparent that Joffrey is excited by violence and sadism, so she flirts with him by complimenting the crossbow and musing about killing something herself. Easily played, Joffrey offers to take her with him to share in the excitement of killing something. Later, Joffrey gives Marjorie a tour of the Great Sept of Baelor, where their royal wedding is scheduled to be held. They are accompanied by Cersei and Olenna. During their tour, Joffrey talks about the various Targaryen kings who were buried within the Great Sept. Marjorie feigns interest in Joffrey's topic but his mother Cersei is annoyed. Cersei then tries to dissuade Marjorie, suggesting that the deceased Targaryens the two are discussing are a macabre subject. However, Marjorie insists that she finds the historical aspect fascinating. She then tells Joffrey that she is glad that the tombs are preserved, and although she understands the actions of Ares were unforgivable, she also believes the Targaryens were great artistic patrons. While Cersei and Olena were engrossed in a conversation about the men in their lives, Marjorie manages to convince Joffrey to greet the crowd outside. Having been somewhat placated by Marjorie's charity, the crowd happily cheers for the pair. As a result of this incident, Cersei feels that she had lost control of Joffrey to the Tyrrells. She comes to fear that the Tyrrells do not have her family's interest at heart. In response, the Queen Regent orders Littlefinger to spy on the Tyrrells. Marjorie Tyrell later finds Sansa Stark praying in the Godswood, dismisses the Lannister guards and engages in pleasant small talk. Marjorie plays a small joke on Sansa by saying that her cousin died of a pox which made her face melt off, but is just trying to brighten her spirits. Marjorie then invites Sansa to visit Highgarden in the Reach someday. 
Sansa believes that Cersei won't allow her to leave the city, but Marjorie Riley points out that Marjorie's authority will take precedence when she is queen. Marjorie points out that if Sansa were to marry Loris, then she would belong in Highgarden anyway. The thought of this makes Sansa choke out tears of joy. Later, Sir Loris invites Marjorie and Sansa to watch him sparring with his squire in the castle gardens. During that time, Sansa praises Loris's swordsmanship and expressed her interest in marrying Loris, something the Tyrells have been plotting to keep her from being used by Baelish or the Lannisters, and to bring the North under the control of House Tyrell, instead of their opponents. Marjorie replies that she would plant the seed of the idea after she and Joffrey marry. While Sansa is skeptical that Joffrey would let her go, Marjorie is confident that he would do it to please his betrothed. Unknown to Marjorie and Sansa, Sir Loras later engages in a sexual encounter with his squire Olivar. During this meeting, Loras briefly mentions that he is to be married to Sansa. Unknown to Loras, Olivar is a spy working for Littlefinger, who in turn reports to Cersei. In response, Cersei's father Lord Tywin Lannister arranges for Cersei and her brother Tyrion Lannister to marry Loras and Sansa, respectively, in order to curb the ambitions of House Tyrell and to bolster the marriage alliance between the Lannisters of Casterly Rock and the Tyrells of Highgarden. While Sansa is unhappy about this arranged marriage to a Lannister, Marjorie consoles Sansa by reminding her that Tyrion was far from the worst Lannister, and that Tyrion might be able to make her happy given his skills as a lover. Later, Marjorie also attends Sansa and Tyrion's wedding. Prior to the wedding reception, she attempts to ingratiate herself with Cersei, commenting that they will technically be sisters soon. However, Cersei rebuffs her friendship by telling Marjorie about the story behind the reigns of Castamir. She explains that the song refers to House Lannister's destruction of the rebellion of House Reign of Castamir. This is meant to imply similarities between the ambitions and position of Houses Reign and Tyrell and that the same fate may fall upon House Tyrell if they plot against the Lannisters. Cersei also threatens to have Marjorie strangled in her sleep if she ever dares to call Cersei's sister again. During the wedding dinner, Marjorie is seated with her grandmother Olena, who talks about what the dynamics of the Lannister and Tyrell families will be after Loras married Cersei, with Marjorie shooting her grandmother a withering glare when Loras storms out.